We fielded a lot of questions over the years here at Calvary. While these may not always be the only answers, they're our answers. And we hope they help you as you continue to grow in your faith. Here's a question that was sent in recently. It dovetails with our Can a Christian Be Demon-Possessed episode from a few weeks ago. This question was a little bit different, so we thought we would tackle it this week. Here it is. Is deliverance ministry biblical? Two people in my wife's life whom she greatly respects believe in this. One is a head pastor and the other a missionary in Germany. I've also spoken with other missionaries from Zambia who practice it, albeit in a little more mellow sense. Basically, many people around us whom I would say are strong in the faith are practicing this, anything from believers being possessed or oppressed to not being able to get past things without being delivered, as well as demons manifesting when they are cast out. I see in Scripture demonic possession of non-believers and Jesus cast them out, yet I struggle to see deliverance ministry as being a strong point in scripture. Any advice would be super helpful. Thanks for sending that question in. We want to be on the same page when it comes to what we're talking about here. Gotquestions.org is a great resource. They have a good explanation of what is meant by the term deliverance ministry. And this is from their article, quote, the generally agreed upon definition of deliverance ministry will usually focus on the casting out of demons or spirits in an attempt to solve problems related to specific demons. For example, a deliverance minister may seek to help someone overcome anger by casting out a spirit of anger. Deliverance ministries also focus on tearing down spiritual strongholds in one's life, finding inner healing, and claiming the victory in Christ over all enemies. Many refer to soul ties, curses, and the legal rights of demons, end of quote. So at Calvary Hanford, our perspective on this issue comes from a couple of different verses. The first is 1 John 4, 4, which reads, You are from God, little children, and you have conquered them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. If a person is a Christian, that means that the Holy Spirit dwells in their hearts. Romans 8, 9, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So, If the Spirit dwells in a heart, how could the devil possess that heart? It's impossible. The Holy Spirit isn't going to be roommates with the devil or one of his demons. As for the idea that there are certain things a believer cannot get past without first being delivered, certain sins or addictions or struggles, we would look to James 4 verse 7 where we read, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So even the devil himself is no match for any spirit-filled believer who is willing to resist him. After all, the strength God gives us is more than enough for any trouble we face in life. 1 Corinthians ten thirteen: no temptation has come upon you except Except what is common to humanity, but God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way out so you may be able to bear it. So while we recognize that many Christians struggle with life-dominating sins, scripture seems very clear on the issue. We can turn from sin. We can resist the devil. We can escape temptation. We were dead in trespasses and sins, but now we're dead to sin, so we can walk in new of life. Now, we won't do it perfectly. If we say we are without sin, we are liars, but we can live victoriously in any circumstance because of what Christ has done for us and provided for us. But it's true. Sometimes Christians start living in a pattern of sin or experience things like addiction. Is that something they need deliverance ministry for? Is it a demon taking over their life or oppressing them? James was very blunt and direct in his letter when speaking to Christians. James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you, cleanse your hands, sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded. So for our part, when we see a Christian brother or sister in sin, we're not told to exercise demons out of them, but simply to warn them and restore them. Galatians 6.1, brothers and sisters, if someone is overtaken in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual, restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourselves so that you also won't be tempted. 1 John 5.16 says this, If anyone sees a fellow believer committing a sin that doesn't lead to death, he should ask, meaning pray, and God will give life to him. Now, when it comes to unbelievers, it's true. They are enslaved to sin. 2 Timothy 2.26 says they are held captive by the devil to do his will. They certainly can be demon-possessed, as demonstrated in the Gospels and the book of Acts. Does that mean we should set up a deliverance ministry to liberate them or our town or our neighborhood or specific demons that need to be exercised before they can be freed from their addictions or temptations? While we believe demon possession does still happen, and God 
can still work exorcisms through his people. The normal activity of Christians is to preach the gospel to unbelievers who are dead in sin. Paul says in Romans 1 that the gospel is the power of God for salvation. He does not say that we first have to fight it out with territorial demons or learn their names or work through methods that bring demons under subjection to us. So spiritual warfare is real. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil, spiritual forces in the heavens. Demon possession is real, though clearly not as prevalent as it was when Jesus was accomplishing his three and a half year ministry on the earth. But our calling is to stand, to resist, to shield ourselves, and then to use the word of God as our one offensive weapon. Looking through the teachings of the New Testament, the focus is not a methodology of battling demons or mapping territories. We don't see the apostles going looking for demon-possessed people. Instead, our focus is the preaching of the gospel and obeying God, which as Christians, we always have the power to do. So a big thanks to Baron for sending this question in. It was great to hear from a listener. If you have a question you'd like us to address, you can send it in by visiting calvaryhamford.com slash questions, and we will do our best to share our perspective on what the Bible says about that issue. 